Hey everyone, this is Corinne Lafon, your favorite radio host, your only radio host on Between the Lines. It's a beautiful day to hear, but day to day, what, what am I saying? I'm twisting my tongue. It's a beautiful day to day here in Trinidad and Tobago. It's beautiful, it's sunny. I'm always thankful to be alive, to see another day, to share and, and empower and, and just inspire you guys yet again. And for you all to inspire me, you know, most of the times when you think that you're here to help people, you end up leaving with them helping you. Eh? So I have today with me Elliot Katz. And Elliot is going to be talking about some things that I know both men and women would be interested in. So let me tell you the topic we're going to be talking about today. We're talking about what men need to do to improve their relationships. And you know, I tend to be the type of host that balance things. So while we're focusing on what men need to do to improve their relationships, we're going to also be looking at the, the female side of things as well, because it's not a one-sided relationship, okay? So there always needs to be a balance. I like to balance things out. It makes sense. So let me tell you a bit about Elliot. Elliot Katz, and that is K-A-T-Z, is on a mission to help men save their relationships and marriages by learning how to be the man that women love and respect. He is the author of Being the Strong Man a Woman Wants, Timeless Wisdom on Being a Man, which is striking a chord around the world. It has been translated into 24 languages. Wow. Well, love is a language by itself. So it has been translated into 24 languages by publishers in Europe, Asia, Latin America, and Africa. Welcome, Elliot, to Between the Lines. Good to be here, Corinne. It's good to have you, Elliot. And, you know, this, this topic, I'm just making sure I adjust my audio so I can hear you properly uh, and share my screen at the same time. Just give me a second here. Because <clears throat> I'm going to be featuring your website. Where is your website? Let me see if I can find it here again. Just give me a second. It's www.elliotcats.com. It's E L L I O T T K A T Z. Yeah, I have it, but I'm not seeing it on my screen. Just one second. Yes, I'm seeing it here. Right. So let me just close off these other things here and it will just focus on you. So, yes, Elliot, like I was saying, love is a language by itself. Let's start with that. Because you translated your book in the 24 languages. So it, well, re it really should be 25. Because love, love is a language by itself. And right. I, want you, I want you to start off by telling me why people say that it is a language. What about it makes it a language? It's, a, it's an emotion. We know right. that for sure. Right. It's an emotion. But why is it a language? You know, it's an interesting question because... Love is a language. Each men and women have different languages. When they talk about love, when they talk about relationships, when they talk to their spouses, and one of the problems, and I talk about this in the book, is that when a woman talks to a man, telling him things, he often doesn't understand what she's saying. You know, it's like she'll he'll, she'll say something, say one thing, and the man will interpret it completely differently. Uh, that's what it's about being a language. <laughs> it's really learning to understand what, what you're, the other person is, is meaning what, and what, what they're saying. Because what, that's a big thing. I've talked to a lot of men, and men think, you know, well, my wife says this, my wife says that, and, and they think that, well, I'm doing this, I, she should be happy. Why isn't she happy? And, and it's because you don't really understand what she meant. And yeah. I mean, I had to learn it too. And that's really how I came to write the book. It was my own journey of learning, of realizing I had a lot to learn. You know, I was yes. married and then I got divorced. And then I, like a lot of people, at first I blamed the other person. Mm -hmm. And then I came to the point of asking myself, you know, what do I have to learn from all this? I don't want to go through this again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really sat on a dress, started talking to the men. You know, we're all confused about what it means to be in, that, <laughs> in a relationship. I started reading reading books on relationships, and they really didn't say anything to me about mm -hmm. what it means to be a man. And mm -hmm. it's only when I turned to the, the teachings of that, the timeless teachings that men used to teach 
younger men about being a man, I was blown away because it coincided with what I heard women say is lacking in men today. They don't show leadership. They don't make decisions. Mm -hmm. And they don't take responsibility. There's this giant difference between all the things men have heard of what, that, that women want and what women really want. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, I'll give you an example of languages between, uh, you know, spouses. Like a woman will say to a man, and this is common, well, you don't do enough at home. Mm -hmm. And the man thinks, well, what are you talking about? I do so much. I, I mm -hmm. change the kids' diapers. I wash the dishes. I take out the garbage. I do this. I do that. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't realize that she's... When he's, she's really saying you're not showing enough leadership at home. You're leaving everything for the woman to make every decision, to run everything. Mm -hmm. And you come in mm -hmm. and, and just say, well, what do you want me to do? And, and you, you know, she tells you everything you want to do, that she wants you to do. And you think, well, look, I'm a good mm -hmm. Whatever my wife tells me to do, I do it. And he doesn't realize that a woman hates having to tell a man what to do. Exactly. <laughs> it makes exactly. her feel like... It makes, <laughs> it makes her feel... Like he's a child and exactly. she is his mother. Exactly. And the thing but, about it, they turn around and tell you, I'm not a child. So I'm like, right. but wait, if you're not a child, then do what you're supposed to do. Take the lead. Why is it that? <laughs> why there is, there that? is. Yeah. I'm not a child. Then don't tell me that. Do what you're supposed to do. Take the damn lead. Why do I have to tell you every time? <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't understand men, you know. You see, this is why. This is why I'm representing the woman here. You represent the men. So this is why, you know, they said, what, what's the name of that book? Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Yeah. We're just from two different planets, you know, and, and somehow we just can't communicate. But I had a guest on my show earlier this week. I think it was Wednesday. And he took me to a place, you know, in the discussion. And we were talking about Star Trek. And he said, it's something that I never even thought about. And I, I'm, a, I'm a Trekkie fan. And he said, look at how we were able to, you know, on Star Trek, people from different planets were able to communicate, were able to relate. They fell in love from different planets. They, they had each other's backs. You know, all these different things. They look different, you know, from, from a, a human being on planet Earth. So how it is that, you know, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if the makers of, of Star Trek really... It wasn't about science fiction. It was really to portray the essence of love and the essence of a unified sort of humanity and humanity, including people from different planets, to be able to communicate and to live and to love one another in one place on, on the Starship Enterprise. Why we can't be like the Starship Enterprise here, you know, on planet Earth, and we all look the same. I mean, there may be different colors, but we are all the same, men and women. And, and we just can't seem to talk to each other here on this one planet. Why, why it is that, that it is so difficult to relate, to, to communicate, to understand? So, you know. Well, I think, I think it's the answer is I think it's because traditionally men were taught what a what, you know, woman expected. You know, a boy grew up with a father mm -hmm. or, or grandfather as a role model. He, who, who, he was able to copy his role model. But today we, we hear all these things. So when a woman says, you know, a man doesn't, you don't do enough at home. Women don't say, you know, I want you to be the leader. They, they say, you're not doing enough. And, and it's, and it's uh, the man doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. he, doesn't, he doesn't understand. So really, traditionally, for past generations, a young boy would see his father as the leader of his home. And he said, well, that's what a man's supposed to do. But today, these confusing things like, you know, a, a man has to decide what his role is. Like, you have to, you, every man has to decide what it means to be a man. Well, that's very nice. It sounds very democratic, but, you know, a woman really expects a certain thing from a man. And that's what I hear from so many women today, so many single women who are saying, you know, today's men, there's something missing. They don't act like, they don't have the positive, masculine, manly traits that a woman wants. In you're, you're breaking you know, up today, a bit masculinity, like it's, it's a, it doesn't make sense. It's like masculinity is a thing. Yeah, some men do stupid things, but that's not being masculine. That's being stupid. <laughs> Elliot, you're breaking up a bit. I don't know what's, what's happening, if it's the internet connection on my end or your end or both our end, but you're kind of breaking up a bit in between. I don't know, but we're going to okay, continue um, going on. No, that's fine. We're going to continue going on because you're okay, chuckling. Okay. There are parts of what you're saying I'm not getting, but the essence is there. 
but but the thing about it is that women are always seeking something from the men and the men too are saying the same why these women are like that the women are not this the women are not that so so they are quarreling on one side and we are arguing on the other side at what point do we meet at what point do we get to understand or, or, or look, step back, look at each other and communicate in such a way that we can understand each other, we can know the, the responsibilities of each other and meet at a particular place. At what point do we meet? What, what do we need to do as both men and women to step up, uh, to, to, to have that kind of relationship that we both seek and deserve? Well, you know, I think uh, for the man's side, he doesn't realize part of his job is to be, uh, you know, a woman wants to look up to man, and it's part of his job to be, uh, you know, someone who inspires his wife, his girlfriend, the woman, to be the kind of woman he wants her to be. Like, you know, what does a man want? A man wants to be respected. He wants to feel his wife is his partner, that together they can come and, and, you know, she'll be his, beside him through thick and thin. But... To do that, you know, the man really has to be worthy of that. He, she, the woman has to feel that he's a man that, who's worthy of being beside him through thick and thin. So th the man has to do that to work on himself, to be a leader, to be strong, to be, to be worthy of being respected and, and, you know, the woman to be his partner. That's really, you know, it's something that men have to learn. And, you know, I had to learn it. And I think it's part of what a man and as he becomes a man, that that's what he has to be to a woman in a relationship. And when a man acts the stupid things and he doesn't, he doesn't to the woman, he's not worthy of being respected. You know, she loses respect for him. Yeah. And, 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 you know, for women, you know, like one thing I, I, I coach women, I said, you know, that really wants it. Like he really wants you to be his partner through thick and thin. And if you, you know, support him and you don't criticize women will say, well, the man makes no decisions. You, I said, but you know what? A lot of men, they fear being criticized. They figure, oh, you know, I'm playing it safe. I'll just let her make all the decisions. And that way she can't criticize me if it goes wrong. Mm. To the point of like, sometimes he'll go on with things that he knows are wrong because he doesn't want to stand up. And then, you know, he thinks he can blame his wife because it was her idea. He just went along. But he, he doesn't realize, you know, he has to take responsibility. If he let her, something go on that he knew was wrong, he can't blame his wife. People say, you are responsible. You know, I've met men. You know, they say, oh, they're divorced, their wives spent money like water, they're broke, or they spent them broke. And, and like, he's presenting himself as a victim, but really, nobody has any sympathy for him because you're the man. You were supposed to take charge and not let it go on. So, exactly. exactly. So, but in the same way, you know, a woman, if she wants to encourage a man to be a leader, like, don't criticize him. If, you know, let him take the lead. Like, you know, I've had women tell me that, uh, you know, single women will say, a man asked me out on a date and he can't even choose a place to go for a cup of coffee. He wants me to, he wants a woman to decide. <laughs> right? Have you, have you experienced this, Corrine? It, it's of very course. common. Very of course, of course. <laughs> and I, I uh, hello, I will tell you something as a woman, especially the type of woman who is bold and, you know, you know who you are, you're confident, you're going to take the lead because, hey, he's giving you, he's giving you that and there's nothing wrong with, a man giving a woman the lead, but there needs to be, like I mentioned earlier in the show, about a balance. It cannot be the woman take the lead and make the man um, seem submissive or like a child or, or sort of demote him and right. feel belittled. It is not that. But if you allow the woman who is confident about herself, knows who she is, she's bold, she's probably holding a, a, a corporate position, she's running her own business, she manages, she knows who she is, she makes the serious decision, she takes risks. She's not going to allow you to just come along and just make some kind of, she's going to take charge. She's right. going to take charge. She's be, right. She will look at you like, Elliot, you know, Elliot clearly cannot make a decision. I am, I'm just taking this damn thing over. And she's going to do that, you know, because you're just not doing what you're supposed to do. But if she sees you as a man that steps up and says, honey, you know, you give her a choice. You can say, we have three choices. Where would you prefer to go? Or let's let's put in some places that we would like to go. 
and we do a, 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 a raffle sort of thing. You decide, you know, we can all pick where we want to go. And from there, this week, it will be your week. That week, it will be my week and so on. You will cause something, but at least you have taken some sort of initiative as a man to, to, to make a decision on how fair um, something can be or, or where we can all go and we are all satisfied. But you, you just say, honey, you decide, you decide, you decide. I'm like, no, I want you to decide. Let's do something that you decide. <laughs> no, that's exactly what I tell women. When a man does that, you know, said, I want her to make the decision. Just say to him, you decide, and then don't say anything more. And let him decide. And, you know, just go along with him and, and, and encourage him, praise him. Oh, you know, when he makes a decision, well, that was a good decision. And if it turned out that it wasn't a good decision, just say, you know, well, we learned from that experience. Mm -hmm. Because they're so afraid of being criticized. Mm -hmm. Please, the woman, don't realize. You know, I've had, I, I've maybe a boss at work, but when I, man, I want to feel like a woman, I want him to take charge. And, exactly. and it's just what you say. They don't want to manage. Just, yeah, you decide whatever you want. Exactly. And but the thing is, today's today's men think I'm being such a nice, non-controlling guy. I, you know, I'll let her decide it. The, the decision doesn't make a difference to me. Yeah, yeah. But no, you want a man to step up. A woman likes a man to be strong. She wants to be standing next to somebody who will protect her. That is what a woman likes. You know, she wants this. This is why they go for the aggressive you know, the so-called athletic, well-built men because they feel, hey, I feel safe around this guy. He's going to protect me. He's my man. He's, he's the person that nobody else is going to come around me when they see me with him. You know, they would be so careful. That, that's what a woman wants, and which is why when we watch these type of shows like Fifty Shades of Grey or, or, or other shows, we see this man, even though he may be a billionaire, but he takes charge. He protects her. He has security for her. He tells her, listen, this is what we're doing. You know, even though he pampers her and he gives her whatever she wants, you know, even if she don't need it, he gives it to her. You know, he pampers her, but he takes a stand. He's like, you're not going to be doing this. That is unsafe for you. I don't want that. I don't want anything happening to you. You know, there's this, this sense of dominance, but yet he is flexible. So women want that type of man that says, honey, in a nice way, honey, this is safe for you, I'm scared for you, or, you know, and we talk about it, but you feel that sense from the man that he cares, he loves, he wants to protect you. He doesn't want anything to happen to you. But just like you said before, I think men allow the woman to make the decision because they want to say, hey, it was you who decided that, that was your choice. It had nothing to do with me. You, you said that, so it takes them out of the responsibility and accountability. And I find that's wimpy. I find that's wimpy. Elliot, are you still there? Are you there? I... Yes, I am. You were not hearing me oh. a while ago. Yeah, yeah, just cut out a little bit. But all the things you're saying are absolutely true. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wrote this book, because there are so many people getting divorced and so many children from broken yeah. homes. And the men think there are good guys, there were good husbands and good fathers. And they don't realize what they, what they were doing was really hurting their marriage. It wasn't hurt, helping it. And that's why this book is translated in 24 languages. And I get emails from people all over the world saying, you know, this book has helped save this marriage, my marriage. You know, people with divorce said, if my husband had read this book, our marriage would not have disintegrated. Men, divorced yeah. men say, if I had known this, you know, two years ago, I wouldn't be divorced today. It's really yeah. learning to be a man. And that's what's really been lost to this generation of men. And, and we really need to share the, the, these teachings that, you know, yeah. So here's, here's learn, what, and that's why, but, go ahead, sorry. So here's what ahead. Elliot, here's what Elliot, I want you to share with me three tips from in your book that you think that men need to know and women probably need to know men. We're focusing on men, but we want to mm -hmm. do a balance with the woman. So share okay, so, three tips that the men should approach. So, so men listening to this or any young couple or even a, a married, long married couple listening to this, they can definitely learn three things that they can apply today or look within their relationship today and say, let me assess my relationship or myself mainly. So it's not a matter of relation, myself mainly at this point in time. So share three things about men and then you can share three things about women so that 
both men and women can look at themselves. So let's start with the men. What are three things that you would want men to look at within themselves? So that well, the first thing, show leadership. You know, when there's a situation, you see that it has to be developed. Don't wait for your wife to tell you what to do. Be a leader. Step forward. Find the solution and implement it. And at first, your wife may be skeptical, but just keep doing it. You will be your hero. Make decisions. Number two is make decisions. You know, simple things like you want to go to this restaurant or that restaurant. Just, just make a decision. Your wife calls you at work. What do you want for supper, chicken or fish? Don't say, oh, whatever you want. Just say, make a decision. It's easy decision. Make it. And the third thing is take responsibility. You know, if, don't blame your wife for things. Even if you, she pressured you to something and you gave in and you knew it was wrong, don't blame her. Take responsibility. You know, your family is looking up to, to you to be the, the responsible person for what's going on in your family. And that means you may have to, you, it's your job to think of what is the greater good for your family and that is taking responsibility for it. For women, it's really enabling the husband to do those things. If, you know, let him decide. If he, if he wants to make a decision, if, you, if a decision needs to be made, just say, you decide. And then don't say anything more. Don't, don't. Don't don't if he, he tries to get you to make the decision, just say no. You, I want you to decide. And the same thing, if there's a situation needs to be dealt with, don't tell him what to do. Just say, could you handle this situation? And if he asks you what to do, just say, you know, just do research. Go look up on the internet. Just talk to experts. That's what I do. Find mm -hmm. a solution. <laughs> and the main thing is, like, and the third thing, criticizing him. You know, men really they want wives to love them, and whenever they get criticized. They feel they don't like it. It just pushes them away. So and it discourages them to lead and making decisions. So unless he's going to do something dangerous or damaging, don't contradict him or criticize him. You know he'll do things his way, which is fine. You know, let him do it. Those are the three things for men and for women. Do that things will be a lot better. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> so so let me dig into your personal life here a bit. You said you were married. How long? Right. How long have you been married? I was married for years. For what? I was married. Wow. So you are divorced now or you're remarried again? No, I'm divorced now. So what, what did you learn from your personal life that you were doing, you know, after you have sought out research, you know, found things that you, you started to look within yourself, do some introspection? What? In looking back now, hindsight, as they say, is twenty twenty. What right? What what would you do differently in going into another relationship or marriage? Well, it's exactly the things we just talked about. I wasn't being a leader. I would just expect my wife. To, I would just do everything my wife told me to do. I figured, well, it's more about running the home. She knows mm -hmm. more raising the kids. I'll just do whatever she says. Yeah. And why wasn't she happy? Mm -hmm. And I wasn't taking responsibility. I, you know, like like. A lot of men, I gave into things that were, 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 and then I would blame her when they went wrong. It's yeah. not, you can't, it's, you have to be responsible. Mm -hmm. And and really that, that once, once I realized those things, I just realized, you know, be the leader and women really appreciate when a man takes the lead. It's simple things like you ask a woman on a date, be a man with a plan. If you call her <laughs> up and say, what? <laughs> absolutely. Be a man with a plan. Her, mm -hmm. You call up and say, well, I thought we'd go here, then we could go there, mm -hmm. and then we'll get something to eat over here they like it it shows yes. that you've thought about them and it makes them feel special yeah you know you think oh, i'm being so easy going i'll let her decide well where do you want to go what time should i pick you up you, you know i, I don't tell me when a man does that the big strike against him because he can't even choose a place for a cup of coffee mm -hmm. how's he going to solve big problems that happen in the marriage mm -hmm. so it, it's made it's made a big difference you know it handles situations you see a problem don't just step back and try to avoid it like step forward and take charge take initiative that's women right. really appreciate that that's oh right. see Corrine, we're on the same track here <laughs> <laughs> that's right but you see the thing about it elliot one of the things that we I, I need to mention to you is that men unlike women a woman would a woman would say yes i didn't do that and now i can see whatever and she's open and flexible but a man for him to admit that he's wrong or for him to admit that, you know, or admit anything, that he's sorry, it goes against his ego, it goes against his pride. It clearly means that a woman probably don't have any ego or pride. You know, when we were being made, 
there, there was no such thing giving out for us. So we have no problem saying we were wrong. We were sorry. You know, we could have done things better. I didn't think about it that way. But a man, so f for you as a man to recognize that now after being divorced, or even people who are not divorced and they're in their marriage to acknowledge these things of themselves, that is a, that is a big leap right there. How, how can you help a man to, to reach the point of first acknowledging that they are doing these things? Well, you know, part of being strong, I mean, the book is called Being a Strong Man, one wants part of being strong is being able to admit when you made a mistake. And it's part of being a leader as well. You, it, it, it's, you know, when you realize you've done something wrong, that's one of the beauties is that sometimes she can give feedback and she makes you realize, oh, that was wrong what I did. Or she could say, let's do things differently. And she makes you realize aspects of a situation that maybe you didn't see. And that's really a wonderful thing about uh, having a spouse. And it's really up to the man to, to be able to receive that you know, feedback in a way that makes them think, well, okay, I'm not perfect. What do I need to do, dif what do, I need to do differently? Well, how can I do things better next time? Mm, yeah, I, I am on your website. I don't know if you're seeing this. I'm featuring your website, you know, um, your Facebook in case anybody wants to get to it or connect with you. Remind us what it is again. It's www.elliotkatz.com, E-L-L-I-O-T-T-K-A-T-Z.com. Also, my Facebook page is uh, Being the Strong Man a Woman Wants. It's named after the, the book, the title of the book. Okay, and where can they get a copy of the book? I'm looking at your website. Where on the website is it available? Is it on Amazon? Right, the book is available on Amazon as a paperback and an ebook. And also, it's also an ebook on Kobo and iBooks. And okay. um, give us the name of the book. Let me. I'm bringing it okay. up so that persons can see what it is. Strong man and woman wants timeless wisdom on being a man. And it's also available in bookstores. And if you go into a bookstore and they don't have it, just ask them to order it, and they'll get it to you pretty quickly. Okay. Let me just pull up your name here. Being the strong woman, a man. Being the strong man. Being a strong no, man. Strong Sorry. Man. You see what I'm saying? I am clearly speaking for the woman. <laughs> being the strong man a woman wants. Beautiful. Right. Time. Timeless yeah. wisdom on being a man. Wow. And I see you have, whoa, 64 customer reviews. I'm looking at your Amazon page here. Yeah. And it says, yeah, if my husband had understood the crucial truths about being a man that I in this book of a marriage would not have disintegrated, said a divorced woman. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. yeah. Yeah, no, really, it's it's a, it's a it's a timeless wisdom that men used to learn. It's been lost to this generation, and really, yeah, marriage and, and man or woman, uh, you know, get this book. It's a lot cheaper than divorce lawyers, and uh, uh, you know, <laughs> it will make a difference. And, and people, like it's cheaper than divorce lawyers. It's, it's nine ninety nine for Kindle and ten ninety two for paperback. Woo. Right. <laughs> It costs and, less than divorce and less stress, less stress. Uh, I've also had women tell me that they realized how they had to change and appreciate their husbands for trying to be nice to them. And, mm -hmm. and, and I said, yeah, that's interesting too, you know, to, to realize the men are doing things, you know, the, what they're doing is really trying to be nice, good husbands mm -hmm. and, and maybe, and, you know, it inspired this woman wrote to me this and it inspired her to appreciate her husband and stop yeah. being so critical of him. Yes. It does it does you know, it does help, you know, when because okay. sometimes a woman have sometimes women have been in some relationships, they have gotten used to a particular type of treatment. And so when somebody's actually being nice to them, they don't recognize it. And so right. it it takes time. So, you know, we're we're coming in with a past we're coming in with what people call quote unquote baggage, which I really don't like to use, but you know, it's a past, it's our experience. And so that is what tends to influence who we are and how we relate to the next person in our life. And we, we need to understand that we need to kind of let go of that, you know, um, because we, we carry these things into a new relationship and it's not fair to the person to, to, to carry that with you. You know, um, it's a new relationship, so just treat it as a, a blank slate, and 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 a new a new discovery, a new journey, a new adventure. You know, so um, 
you know, I we, we're on the same path. It takes some absolutely. Work. But would... yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, Elliot. No, I was going to say that, uh, but at the same time, you know, what what men think that they're being nice, it's good, it's, appreciate, it's good that a woman should appreciate he's being nice, but also the man really, she really wants him to be a leader. And if he avoids being a leader, I think he's being nice, it's frustrating to the woman. So really it's about how men need to change themselves, step forward and show leadership, and they'll see such a positive response from their wives. You know, give it a try. If you're in a marriage, You'll see a lot of men don't believe me. They say, oh, no, no, this isn't what women want. Believe me, this is what women want. <laughs> read the reviews on Amazon. There's all these women saying, how, you know, how do I get my husband to read this book? How do I, you know, one woman said, I'm going to tell my husband, read this book, and then I'm waiting for you. It'll take you about an hour to read the short book. Take an hour to read, and I'm waiting for you in the negligee. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think, I think women should just buy their husbands these books. Don't wait for them to buy it. Buy it. Put it there, have some petals lining up from after he read the book and say, honey, after an hour or two, I'm giving you two hours, <laughs> right? You, you right. have the petals that lead to the bedroom. I'm sure he would read that book in under an hour. So <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but we don't want to say to people, hey, you know, once you've read the book, you just need to get to the bedroom. No, it's really to apply, apply what you have read in the book and really work at it really work at it because everything is not solved with sex or intimacy it that is just a temporary thing and then you go right back to who you are you know and while change might be difficult for some it is very possible if you want to and if you love the other person and that works for both men and for women if you love the other person you would be willing to work on yourself you'll be willing to make the changes you'll be able to accept you'll be able to tolerate you know and be open and flexible and that's, that's what it is on both sides. Are you in agreement with that, Elliot? But what you're saying is true, but, it's, but a lot of men are really lost. See, that's the problem. They say, well, what, what should I do differently? They're really at a loss. And that's what the purpose of this book is to make them realize, you know, your job is to be a leader and take responsibility for what's going on in your family. Mm -hmm. all, all those things you've heard over the past 20 years, 30 years, you know, put them out of your mind. You know, they don't want you to develop your feminine side. They want you to be a man. <laughs> and, and, they don't want right. you to develop your feminines. We have enough estrogen going on in our bodies. Right. So don't they, want, they want you to be the man in the home, and that means being a leader who knows what's going on, who yeah. sees problems, doesn't wait to be told what to do. You see, you, you know, men, women will say men are seem they seem to be oblivious to what's going on in their home. Yeah. The, thinks, the woman, uh, there you go, she could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The woman will say he's oblivious, but the man thinks, well, it's her job. She runs the home. And right. Are, Right? No, no. It, you know, there's some things she can have, and other things she wants him to be aware of what's going on. She sees a problem. She wants him to step forward and deal with it. Yeah. Be yeah. a leader. Yes, it's crazy. And it's such a simple thing. My goodness. Ah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I probably need to do some research on the whole brain makeup of men. And, and Jesus, I don't know. <laughs> well, that, it really comes back to what you said at the beginning, it, you know, the language of love. Men and women speak different languages. And so, you know, we don't, we don't really understand what the other person is saying because we interpret it our way, but really that's not what she meant. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when she says, you know, you're not doing enough, he thinks, oh, I do so much. I'm, you know, I work all day. I do this, I do that. She doesn't want you to be oblivious. She wants you to be a leader. Like men will say, I work so hard at my job. I yeah. said, save some of your energy. You work hard at your job because you want to have, provide a nice life for your family. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. You have to save some energy to show your share of leadership at home for the same reason, to yeah. provide a nice life for your family. Yeah, and, and for women, you know, even like you were mentioning before, they lead a corporate um, title, they have a corporate title or they lead, you know, at, at a workplace. When they come home, they really don't want to be doing that. And, and men too, they really don't want to be doing that. But you have a different role. You're a father, you're a wife, you're a lover, you're a... You know, you're not the, the boss. You're not the manager. You're not in charge of a team. You know, this is your family. You have to take on a different persona, a different self, a different role. And you have to realize who you are in relation to your wife and who you are in relation to your husband. And so it becomes a difference there. And so from the time you walk... Absolutely. Home, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. A, a woman doesn't want to... You know, she may be a boss at work, but she doesn't want to be the boss at home. She wants no. a man to be the leader. She wants the man to be... The the tower of strength that she can look up to. 
She wants to be the rock that she can lean on. That's All those right. ideas that we haven't heard for, you know, that, that don't say, people don't say, but really men have to learn that. So take that responsibility, show yeah. that leadership. Yeah. You'll see that your wife will love you for it. Yeah. And she'll respect you. Yeah. 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 We, we, we need, we need to, we need to do some sort of retreats and take these men back in time, you know, to really understand. I've seen these, you know, these type of shows, you know, where they, where they have retreats, where they take the couple away from everything, technology, whatever, whatever, and just learn to understand each other, you know, no influence, no distractions, no nothing. And sometimes it, it takes that to, to bring your relationship back, you know? Absolutely. It's like learning to understand what the other person is saying. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not talking when the other person is talking. So you're able to hear and understand and, ask questions for clarity because that is all part of the communication. You don't understand something you keep, you know, just like all your book is in 24 languages. I can't read something in, in probably French or, or Nigerian or something else. I would have to seek more clarity and understanding. What is this saying? What do you mean? What's the context within what this, you know, this is said, you know, I don't, I'm not just going to assume this is what it means. So you have to take the time to seek, 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 understand, ask questions back and forth, you know, mirror it. Is this what you're saying? You know, and let the person confirm or deny, no, that's not what I'm saying. This is really what I'm trying to say, you know? So it, it takes, it takes work. Love is a language. It's a language and we need to figure out how do we overcome that language barrier? How, at what point do we meet? At what point do we get to understand each other? um in love yeah absolutely and, and it's really that's why i did this book to teach men that this is what it really means to be a man in a relationship and just do it i'm going to understand what your wife is saying to you this is she wants you to take the lead when i tell women you know they ask what does your book say it means to be a man i and i heard to be a leader and they smile and they say well how do i find a man like that yeah that's what they want <laughs> Where are they hanging out, Elliot? Where are they hanging out? You must know. Where are those men? Do you have them over at your house? What? Where, where do we find those men? The leaders, the, the strong men, the protective men, the man. Where do we find them? Uh, uh, the book. Then you'll have <laughs> <laughs> They're in the book. <laughs> We're well, looking for the men that read this book. So all the men that read this book, well, please let us know where you are. Read the book and do it. Right? Where, please let us know that you have read this book as a man so that we can find you. And if you haven't and you want to become a, a man, then buy this book and then tell us where you are. Sounds like a plan? That sounds great. <laughs> either way, you need to get the book. You either have read the book before or you're about to read a book. Either way, just tell us where you are and we will, and, and we will find you. Okay, just just tell us where you are because you're the guy we're looking for. <laughs> Elliot, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for being on Between the Lines and thank you so much for sharing these timeless wisdoms. You know, we always have to go back to the origin, go back to basics. You know, people feel everything is, you know, technology and, and innovation and that's all well and fine. But with everything, we always have to go back to basics because that, that is where everything has been founded that is where all the values have been, you know, have been cemented. We need to go back to basics. So timeless wisdom on being a man. Thank That's you so right. much, Elliot. Is there any okay. final words you want to leave with the audience? Well, just I, like if people can reach me through the website if they have questions or comments or feedback. I, I welcome everything. And just again, if they want to get the book, it's on Amazon. It's a paperback and it's an ebook and it's an ebook on Kobo and iTunes and iBooks uh, and and it's also in bookstores. So I look forward to hearing from your audience and really making it, you know, helping men <coughs> save their marriages and prevent divorces and prevent children from being from broken homes. Oh, love that. That's a great way. Thank to you for having me on. It's been wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much, Elliot. And I'm sorry that, you know, this has been choppy, but I think people have gotten, those who are listening and those who will be listening have gotten the essence of what we're discussing and you know, I, once they have gotten a copy of the book, I think they're going to learn even much more. And I, am, I anticipate that they're going to be reaching out to you for more. Yeah. So thank you so much for being here. Okay. Thank you, Corinne.